Hello and a very warm welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast. John is back, fit and well, ready to go. How are you doing, John? How are you feeling now? I'm okay, Xander. How's yourself? I've still got this call, John. I kind of shake it off. It's uh, <clears throat> for, for about a week and a half now, so if you hear me coughing, I do apologise. Uh, but we'll soldier on. Uh, we'll soldier on, John. Uh, if you can hit the like button and the subscribe button, that would be appreciated. Uh, the likes are going up a wee bit just now, so if we could just push that a wee bit more, hit the like and subscribe, uh, we would really appreciate that. Um, and before we get into the the preview of the St Johnston game, the weather forecast for tomorrow is no snow and bitterly cold, so the game should be okay to go ahead, I think, John. I think so. I'm up in that kind of region. It's, there's, there's no snow here, so looking good so far. Nice. No, I think the game, I think it will go ahead tomorrow. Uh, obviously, don't quote me on that. It could be called off. Uh, there's already a game been called off today, the Livingston game that's been called off. So there is games being affected by the snow. So just keep an eye on it if you're heading up to Perth tomorrow. And uh, drive safe if you're going up as well. All right, John, let's get into the podcast. Uh, I've not had your take on the Lazio game yet, John. What did you think about the Lazio game? Uh, it was disappointing, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I was watching that thinking there's something in this for Celtic. I thought Celtic were the far better team. And then again, they never really created anything, did they? It was no. it was all pass passing about the back, side to side, gone nowhere. Never really created it, and loads of possession. Done nothing with it. Lazio, they stole it again, didn't they? Really, they bring yeah. in a, a quality striker, and that's that's uh, the difference between the teams, really, Xander. Definitely, that's exactly what I thought as well. As soon as, as, soon as they brought on. Um, your man up front, you know, that was it. That was it. This, the defence just couldn't cope with him. So, yeah, it was it was a tough watch again, John. It was a tough watch, but sort of expecting it at the same time. I suppose it was a must-win game for Celtic, obviously. And we couldn't do it. So, we've got to take our medicine and move on, I suppose, John. One more game left in the Champions League against Feyenoord. That'll probably be the game we win now, eh? Eh... Uh... I don't know. I've never gone to say one in the Champions League and Celtic in the same sentence these days. But it's the best chance of getting a win. We played Lazio off the park at Celtic Park, didn't we? So, and they stole it at the very end. I don't know. I'm not really that. I don't really care what happens in that game. But I would like it for the Celtic fans' sake. To see Celtic uh, beating final at home in Celtic Park, I don't see any reason why they shouldn't. To be honest with you, yeah, yeah. So Champions League's nearly over anyway. We're out of Europe before Christmas, John. You know, there's a big difference between Lazio and Limassol. Eh? That's there's a big difference there. You know, it's they are a top top quality team with some of the best players in the world in their team. So you know, to be to be on top, I would say for quite a bit of that game, John. To be on top, we just couldn't. We, we just couldn't find the target. As you say, there was that one chance. I think it was Kyogo that just went by the post. Um, but apart from that, we never really created much. Um, all right, we'll leave that there because it's that's done and dusted. New John, we'll move on to this Johnston game. Twelve p.m. kickoff, John, on Sunday. The game is on Sky Sports. The referee for this one is. Don Robertson, he's the ref, he's the man in the middle. I think points are must there, John, I was thinking. Aye, well, they never made it easy the last time we met them, did they? Dealt it part, one each. I was at nothing mm-hmm. each, I can't remember now. Uh, nothing each, yeah. Nothing each, aye. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, a horrible game, very similar to, the, to our last game against Motherwell. Exact same game, basically. So... I've got a feeling it's going to be pretty much the same thing tomorrow, Xander, right? It's going to be exactly the same type of game. Yeah, I think it's going to be 
Um, uh, St Johnston, sorry, packing the box with two lines of five, John. Uh, one in the, the the penalty spot, one in the eighteen yard line, and they're just going to try and keep us out. That's that's what's going to happen. So it's down to Celtic to break that down. It's down. It's down to us to, you know, get the ball wide, get wide, get some crosses into the box. But you know, these crosses into the box, there's no height in there, have we? There's nothing. There's nobody there to, you know, win a ball in the air, especially with the big six foot plus St Johnson defenders, John. So these crosses into the, the ball, the box, they're a wee bit of a waste of time, are they no? They're a waste of time, but a lot of the low crosses into the box, that's what Kyogo thrives on. You've got to remember that. He he thrives on that, you know, the low low cross with pace. Mm-hmm. And Kyogo nip them into the front or the back post or whatever. Or in between defenders. Maybe that should be the plan the more. Get the crosses low. Yeah. Just yeah, a, yeah, definitely. Definitely, John. Yeah, keep them low, keep the crosses low, the pinpoint accuracy, and also have more shots from outside the box because against Motherwell, I don't think we had enough shots from outside the box. And uh, we've got players there that can they can finish from those areas. Yeah, definitely, John, I agree. I totally agree with you there. And before we move uh, on, I just want to, this is your last chance to enter the competition to win the Bertie Old Celtic Legends frame print. This is a long Last chance, the draw will be made tomorrow and the, the, no, the draw, whoever's closest, sorry, will be, the prize will be given away tomorrow after the game, obviously, so some, very simple, just leave in the comment section what minute you think the first yellow card will be handed out in the St. Johnson game tomorrow, whether it's a Celtic or a St. Johnson player, it doesn't matter, we're just looking for the minute the first yellow card will be handed out. Leave your guess in the comment section, folks. This is your last chance to, to win the Bertie Old Legends print. All right, let's get into some odds, John. Let's get into some odds on the game tomorrow uh, against St. Johnston. Gamble responsibly if you're going to put a bet on anything that, that John or myself says. So St. Johnston, John, the 14-1. The draw is 6-1, Celtic 2-9. 14-1 St. Johnston. But that was similar odds to Motherwell, wasn't it? Aye, so you kind of look into the odds when you're playing in Scotland, can you? <laughs> Definitely no. You know, it's a six to one the draw, and you, that's that's what the result was against Motherwell. So, so if you're going, if it's going to be the same, you're getting six to one on that. But hopefully, it will not come to that. John, we've had plenty of rest. When was the last time we played Tuesday? So that's what five days rest we've had. Uh, so no excuses there for tiredness, John. The, the players should be fresh. I would think. I hope so. And there was—I don't think there was any injuries injuries to take away for the the game in midweek is either. So I think it should be all good there. Was somebody injured in that game actually? No, that I've heard, John. I've not heard, I've not heard anything. Uh, did Yang not go off injured? Yang did he? Right. I've not heard any updates or anything. Then no, I've not heard. So if he's injured, then uh, we'll get to the team lineups a wee bit later on. But I'm not, I've not heard anything anyway, John. Obviously, Palmer, he's going to be back as well. He's He was suspended in midweek. So he'll be back as well. So, you, you know, Palmer's just top, top quality, especially with the crosses into the box we were mentioning earlier, John. Aye. So um, let's have a wee look at the, the first goal scorer bet, betting, John, right? Kyogo, 23, 0, 5 to 1. Palmer, 6 to 1. O'Reilly, 71. Carter Vickers is an outside bet, 28 to 1. And if you, if you fancy one of the St. Johnson players to score first, uh, Stevie May is 20 to 1. Uh, Clark is 16 to 1. And Kane is also 16 to 1. Kane, John, Kane. Has Kane not been at St. Johnson for about 30 years? <laughs> I just, I, I always remember hearing the name Kane associated with St. Johnson. Maybe I'm imagining things, I don't know. Is it the same Kane, though? No, there was a Paul Kane. I don't know if it's the same guy. Nah, I'm not sure. I just know that years ago, when Celtic were playing St. Johnson, there was a Kane also player. Maybe it's his son. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but that's a, that's a betting on them. 16-1 for Clark and Kane, both to score the first goal, John. Fancy a wee flutter there? No. No, right, OK. We'll move on. No, I don't fancy a flutter in any, any games. I don't gamble, but uh, <laughs> if I was to have a wee flutter... 61 the draw. It's pretty good odds, isn't it? The way these teams play against Celtic. Yeah, 
say you were walking along the street, right, and you found a pound. Where would you put your pound on where, where all the names and uh, odds are just read out there? John O'Reilly, 71. Palmer, 61. Kane, 16 to 1. Stevie May, 20 to 1. If you had that three pound to put a bet on, where would you put your pound? Ah. Uh, <laughs> judging by the way Celtic players are playing these days, I really don't know. Last couple of games, no been too good at finishing, have we? Uh, just, just, just keep your pound in. <laughs> I, 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 I'd probably, probably spend it in their own sausages under. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that how much our own sausage is? I thought it would be dearer than that. I don't know. No, I don't know. It depends where you go for your own sausage, doesn't it? But much as our own sausage these days, just uh, just coming off the track. <laughs> I've no bought our own sausage in a long time. <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't know. I, that, I don't stay anywhere near near a rolling sausage place, so I couldn't tell you. I wonder what the gone rate is for our own sausage these days. These days, as if anybody knows, put it in the comment section. Um, <laughs> 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 and on that I've actually I've got a joke as well John I've got a wee joke for you right here we go right. a ranger supporter walks into the doctor and says to the doctor doctor I'm not feeling very well what's, what's up with me can you tell me the doctor, the doctor says that's simple you're fat the ranger supporter says no 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 I want a second opinion the doctor says alright you're ugly or not <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. no, I don't know the old ones are the best. <laughs> Aye, no, there's no, I was going to ask you who the Rangers supporter was, but that could be any of them, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no offence to any Rangers supporters are listening, by the way. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, moving on, moving on. Aye, you uh, see, the Rangers fans need to have a broad uh, pair of shoulders. It's just a joke. Take it away. That's and it. Then. That's it. All right. Um, Correct score, John. Let's go to the correct score. So I'm going to start with the draw because we've had a few draws in the last few weeks, haven't we? Um, St Johnston, Motherwell, Hibs, you know, quite a few draws. So the draw is 12 to 1, John, uh, in Perth, the more 12 to 1 the draw. And we've got 2 nothing to Celtic. I can't read mine writing. 2 not to Celtic, 6 to 1. 3 not to Celtic, 13 to 2. 2-1 to Celtic is 17-2, to 3-1 to Celtic is 10-1, to and 4-0 Celtic is 11-1. to So, quite, quite good odds there if you're thinking 4 nothing, 11 11-1, to John. But the, the draw, 12-1, what are you thinking some of the odds, John? 12-1 to one for a draw. 12-1, to one, that's quite good, isn't it? Because you got to remember, we're going up there the more, John. It's going to be freezing cold, minus six. You know, it's going to be ice and snow all the place. It's going to be one of the horrible, horrible games. You know, don't get me wrong. I don't think it'll be a draw. I'll tell you my score prediction later. But anybody that's thinking it's going to be tough for us the more, you're getting 12 to 1 the draw, 11 to 1, 4 nothing to Celtic. Aye. It's good odds for a draw, that actually, because it's it's got potential to be a draw. It's got the potential. I'm not saying it's going to be a draw, but there's potential there because we know how they're going to play. Yeah. But like we were saying earlier, Celtic get their act together. More shots for outside the box, especially Carter Vickers and Liam Scales, because they're going to get a lot of space. Mm -hmm. Have a pop. That's it. And Definitely. The other thing is, what we spoke about earlier, low crosses for Kyogo. Keep the ball low. Kyogo's five feet eight or whatever it is. He's a small guy playing against six foot three inch defenders. He's not going to win any headers in there unless he finds himself in a wee bit of space at the back post or something. Keep the crosses low. That's what Kyogo thrives on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, John. Um, ah, it's, there's no point in whipping these big high balls into the box when there's nobody there to, to hit, to at least try and win the header. And who, who, who's the, who have we got in there that can win a header? Nobody really. Palmer's short. Uh, Callum McGregor's short. Kyogo's obviously short. Um, Turnbull's short. You know, there's, there's, there's no... Six feet. There's no, there's no height in that team, John. Even the six feet. But Turnbull can't win a, a header in there, can he? Not that I've no. saw anyway. 
No, Martarelli's probably the tallest uh, midfielder we've got. I think he's about six feet two. No, no he's only one more better. And then, obviously, when we get corners, you've got your defenders, they come up for the back. That adds a bit of height. But in general play, John, we've not got a lot of height in that team. So, try, as you say, try and keep the, the crosses low. Well, it gives the, the forward players a chance to, you know, well, win the ball. You can, you, know? you can see that Celtic try every game. Try to get to the byline for a cutback if they're going to keep it low, because that's what they do a lot, trying to get to the byline for a cutback. But recently, there's been absolutely no space to play like that. Getting to the byline, yeah. as soon as you try and cut it back, there's four players on you. Yeah, so, that's right. There's been absolutely no space to do that. So the, the only other option for Celtic is to try and maybe whip the crosses in low. Palmer can whip them in low for Kyogo or any of the other midfielders to get in, depending on who's playing. So either the low whip time cross or shots from outside the box. Because what, right now what Celtic's doing is they're going left to right, left to right, back front, back front, whipping a high cross, nobody gets it. Or nobody gets to it. And the attack mm. just crumbles and falls to bits. It gets blittered up the park. Yeah. And then, then we start again, that's right. Um, Yang as well. I think he's got to start taking his man on the outside a wee bit more, John. He's, he's always trying to cut inside and find that easy, easy pass. He's got to be a wee bit more braver, I think, Yang. And try and, I know he's just a young boy, but you know, if you're going to make it a Celtic, that's what you need to do. You've got to try and be a wee bit braver, take your man on. You know, because he's got the pace and the ability to do it, so he's got to try that a wee bit more often. If he's playing, obviously, because we don't know if he's injured or not. Um, what did you think of Hangway, John? What's his name? Uh, Forrest. The other day, nice I don't, I, I don't, I, I do I pick on him, John, but I just what, what I saw was it was so poor, so poor, really was. Sorry, John, on you go. Well, look, if he's no good enough to play for Celtic in the in the league. He's no good enough to play in the Champions League. Because no. he asked me, James Forrest's time at Celtic is finished. His best days are long gone. They're well behind him. And he's certainly no good enough to play in the Champions League. That's what I've seen. Yeah, it's start to be Mikey Johnston, I thought. I think that was my predicted lineup actually before the game. I said he would start with Johnston. And he never done it. He picked Forrest. So, you know, that was, that was hard Big to surprise. watch. Was, yeah, it was a surprise, but it was, it was he picked him, John. You know, it's and it, to no play him all season, then pick him in a Champions League game. It just doesn't add up to me. Well, um, oh, I don't remember ever seeing James Forrest playing on the left that often, do you? Well, I just once or twice, and then he gets moved back over to the right, didn't he? So I know that often, as you say, John. But it was shocking, honestly. It should have been two calf after twenty minutes. Dive Sorry, James, James Forrest listens to this, but but it's poor. Um, and I'm all for all the Celtic players. I want them all to do well, but Jamesy, I think his time's up at Celtic. Yeah, and the first I know I don't want to go back to the Lazio game, but the first thing Mikey Johnson did when he came on was beat his man. First thing he did, beat, beat, beat his man, started a, started a, a, an attack. John, that's that's why I think he should have been known for the start. We. Mikey Johnston, but anyway, stunned. I think, think we James Forrest puts in a good cross. He's got a lovely wee wedge chip type cross that keepers struggle with. Puts it right to the back mm -hmm. post. See if you could take Mikey Johnson's skill and James Forrest's crossing ability to have a good player there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Frankenstein, no. <laughs> aye, 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 something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I know what you're saying, John. Yeah, I know what you're saying. But uh, we'll move on. Back to the St. Johnson game, right? Um, no. See, the other thing I was going to say about the St. Johnson game, now we're back onto it. Mm -hmm. We're going on about uh, get the low crosses in for the, the smaller players, whip them in, have shots through outside the box. Whenever you get a chance, just have a go. The other thing is, our skillful attackers, I don't know, maybe let's say Cal McGregor or Bernardo, whoever plays or whatever, try and get past this defence, try and go by them. If there's four players in front of you, try and go by them. Chances are, with a box that congested, you're going to get filled, you're getting a penalty. Mm -hmm. Try and go by them. Don't try and pass it left and right and left and right and backwards. 
try and go buy them. Have a go at getting past players. You never know what could happen. Yeah. Somebody sticks a wee leg and you. You've got a penalty. I totally agree, John. It's, it's it's been tough to watch the last couple of games. I know we beat Aberdeen six nothing, but the the Motherwell game is the same. You know, you know, try nobody's taking their man on. They're trying to find that easy pass every time. So, um, but we're we're getting as you said eighty odd percent possession every game. But you know, it's so tough trying to break these teams down, John. It really is. I, I do feel for the players at the same time. You know, Aye. try to break these uh, ten men behind the uh, eleven men, sorry, behind the ball every game. But um, it's down to us to break that down, John. We've just got to, uh, and the manager as well. We've just got to, we've just got to break it down. It's as simple as that. Um, St Johnson's Forum, John lost one, drawn one, lost drawn. So it's mixed forum there. Celtics Forum, drawn lost one, lost one one. So as I say, the form. Uh, two losses and a draw in the last six. Well, Celtic don't normally drop points three games in a row. So, if that's sent to go by, we lost to the Lazio, drew against Motherwell. So, I don't know. I think I think it's kind of point to a Celtic win. They've just got to be doing the right things instead of trying to play the same way they played against Motherwell. Even though they were quite fast and Look, 82 or 85 percent of possession doesn't win your games. It gives yeah. you a better chance of winning a game if you've got the ball. But look, the way I'm looking at this, more shots, less crosses. Yeah, try and have more shots outside the box. You know, Palmer, because Palmer can whip in a great shot for the for the position he plays, and he plays on the left, and he can whip in a good shot with his right foot as well. Have shots, Palmer, instead of trying to just. Maybe put it onto somebody, see that the back post, have a shot, have a go. Yeah. That would be my message to Celtic the more. Have a go. Just fire shots and you never know what can happen. And what about this penalty carry on, John? He's missing these penalties. I know Tumble scored uh, against Motherwell, but we've been missing a few of these penalties. We need somebody to step up the confidence. And I, got, I think it should be McGregor. I think as a captain, he should be standing up. <clears throat> Grabbing the ball, putting it in the spot and putting it in the back of the net. Now it doesn't matter who takes the penalty. Go up and smash it into the net. And then they just try to be fancy what Palmer did the last one. Walking up, then stopping. I mean, it's hard to get a lot of purchase on the ball when you stop and then hit it, isn't it? No, it's, uh, but yeah. obviously Palmer's got a lot of power in his shot. He's a fantastic player. But take a run up and smash it. I think when you stop and all that, I think it gives the keeper more confidence. Yeah, and he also took, he also had the penalty the exact same uh, part of the goal. His first penalty, so the keeper keeper knew where he was going to go. You know, because I thought I thought to, when he when he stepped up, I said he's going to put it in the same place, and he did. The keeper saved it. But I'm not a goalkeeper, I'm not a player. So, um, <clears throat> St. Johnson, John, eleven points, and they're sitting eleventh in the group, so they're sitting second bottom of the table. Will that go for anything tomorrow? I think Murrow were off form as well, were they not? They were, but so were St. Johnson the last time we played them. They were off form. That's right. That's right. <laughs> they, they, get, they were getting beat. We were, I can't mind. Very poor teams in the League Cup. The group stages, yeah. the early group stages of the League Cup, they were getting beat by. I can't mind who the team was. but Annan and stuff like that, wasn't it? Annan Athletics, teams like that. But they came to Celtic Park and got a draw. Mm-hmm. Do you think they'll come out a wee bit more than at home the more, John, or will they just still pack the defence? Exact same performance I'm expecting. Exact same. Now, they're very, very poorly supported teams at Wells St. Johnson, aren't they? Aye, they're aye. They don't aye, have many fans. Nah, it's always empty, isn't it? Do we get extra stands when we go there, John, or is it just the one stand we get? I don't, I'm not too sure. I think it's just the one. Is it two? Is it the two stands behind the goals? I think it might be the two, aye. Uh, not sure. All right. What's your predicted lineup then? Go for it, John. What's your what's your one to eleven? Well, I don't know if Yang's injured. I'm sure he was. He went half injured. As the commentator was saying, Yang's going to have to come off. He can't play them, but he stayed on at the end. I'm sure. I switched to half after the first goal. As soon as that immobile scored, I turned it off. But before that, I'm sure they says Yang couldn't continue or something. Or maybe it was the second goal. I can't even remember to be honest with you. Try to blank it out my mind. 
But uh, mm-hmm. might have been the second goal I turned it off. It. But uh, but I'm sure uh, Hartson was saying that Yang looked injured. But I've not heard anything after that, so I don't know. No, um, I, I've not I've not heard anything myself, John. So I think he's fit. So I'll give you my lineup anyway. It's going to be the, the same uh, back four. We're going to have Joe Hart, Carter Vickers, Liam Scales, Alistair Johnson, Greg Taylor, Senator of the Park. I think it'll be a start for Turnbull the Mora. I think Matt O'Reilly and Callum McGregor. Up front, Kyogo, Yang and Palmer, if Yang's fit. Yeah. I thought um, Bernardo played okay the other night, John. I thought he'd done okay, but He's, uh, do you think we'll keep him on? I know he's just a lone player just now. Do you think we'll sign him permanently or do you think we'll, he'll go back to Benfica? He looks half decent, but I've not seen enough of him to say we should sign him permanently. Mm. I'm the same. Uh, as regards to the team lineup, it's the exact same, John. No, no changes. I wonder if we'll maybe throw in a, a Naroki or a, a Liga Bielka tomorrow. Maybe gay skills arrest. I'm not sure, but. Nah, I'll stick with the same. Um, Joe Hart and goal, Johnston, Taylor, Scales, Carl Vickers, uh, what's his name? McGregor, Matt O'Reilly, David Turnbull. Hi, just the same, isn't it? Just the same. Uh, Yang, Yang, Kyogo and Palmer. Hi, just the same. Yeah, I'll go for the same one to 11, John. Fair enough, fair what, enough. What about a wee, a wee curveball? What about starting with O? If they're going to be putting in high crosses early. It's not going to happen, John. I just think Kyogo's the number one striker. He's going to start with him. I could be wrong, of course, but nah, I just think it'll be same old, same old, John. Uh, Kyogo up front. Kyogo's not looked the same player since Hans left, has he really? No, he's not. He's, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. We've got a lot of injuries there now and he's not getting the same service. I, I would suggest, you know, Hitati. Always plays the race through body Kyogo. Maeda, good cross into the body Kyogo. Um, even a bad John. So, no, we're missing all the players that were setting them up for these goals. He's still getting the occasional goal here and there, Kyogo, isn't he? But uh, I, know, I know what you're saying. He's, he's, no, he's not been the same this, uh, this season, I would say. But he's still a fantastic wee player. And he will pick it up, John. Brendan will eventually get the, the best of him again, I would think. Aye. Uh. When I scored that winner at Ibrox, I thought Hugo's going to be fire this season. But it's not worked out that way. But he, he is a great wee player. I'm not saying anything bad about Hugo. He's, I'm just saying he's no. It is, a, it is a case of he's not getting the service as well, like you said. And the defences are packing the 18 yard box. So there's no space in there. Absolutely no space in there. For Q, mm-hmm. what thrive on, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right, John. Uh, score prediction then. What are you thinking? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I've never given it much thought. And if it's if it's anything like the, the way the last time they played against Celtic, it could be a potential banana skin the more under. But that's all doing to Celtic breaking it down, isn't it? I think we need to pepper the. The keeper with shots, make him make saves, we make pad it out to one of your strikers, you know. And but I yeah. definitely have shots, get more shots in and get lower crosses in, whip them in with pace because you don't know what can happen. It's like pinball when that happens. So, yeah, it depends how Celtic, uh, how they show up the more. Is it going to be a case of the same old, same old left, right, left, right, back, forward, back, forward, left, right? Try to find a, a yard of space. Are they going to try and have shots with Carter Vickers and Liam Scales coming forward? Have a pop. See what happens. I'll say 2 0 Celtic tomorrow. What did you say, sorry, John? 2 0? 2 0. 2 0. That's a tough unit, isn't it? 3 1. 3 1 Celtic, John. That's. I think we'll be back on the scoring form tomorrow. Uh, we'll score they'll try and get an equaliser they'll get the equaliser 
or we'll go 2 0 up and up, but they'll get a goal somehow. I don't know, I'm not sure. But I think it'll be 3 1 Celtic tomorrow, John. A comfortable enough performance tomorrow, and we'll come out of there with the three points. And that's all that matters, John, isn't it? As long as we come out of there with the three points. Aye. That's it. Three points. And of course, okay, the, Rangers, the Rangers play at three, didn't they? So it puts them under pressure if we get that win. Exactly. And we're going to that now. We touch on the weekend's fixtures, John. The day we've got Kamarnock Hearts, we've got Livy and Ross County off because of the snow. And we've got Motherwell and Dundee. Uh, Sunday, we've got St. Johnson against Celtic, Hibs against Aberdeen, and Rangers against St. Mirren. John, that's the same St. Mirren manager. And I know I keep mentioning this. That was happy, very happy with Rangers getting the penalty and happy that his team got sent down to 10 men against Rangers at Love Street the last time they played. So that's what Rangers are up against, up against tomorrow. Aye. The only thing he was missing for his interview was saying, I, th- I thought that should have been a penalty to Rangers. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> yeah, Aye, I thought I was... You can just tell, can you? He's Rangers fan through and through. Uh, I was disgusted when I heard they said that, John. That was coming from a manager that's sitting third in the league that could have went second if they were beat Rangers that day. You've got to take that in mind as well. You know, that's absolutely unbelievable that a manager that can say that against his own team. You know, just anyway. Uh, uh, a couple well, of minutes. I'm, not, I'm not saying Sorry, Steve Robinson a Rangers fan, by the way. I was only kidding. I don't, I don't know about anything about the guy. But all I know is when he sends his team out to play them, it's a different team that turns up than the one that plays Celtic. That's all I'm saying. And it's there for everybody to see. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. It's it's, 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 un, it's unbelievable the difference, you know. You know, Rangers will canter over them tomorrow. You know, that's it. Rangers are a team on their knees just now. Again, John, new manager bounce is gone. They're uh, limits all, you know. Aye. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Yeah, the booze, the, the yeah, booze everything else. The, what do you call it again? The booze of Ibrox. <laughs> <laughs> the booze of Ibrox, yeah, that returned in midweek there. That was unbelievable. And then they couldn't beat Aberdeen. Uh, but watch it tomorrow because St. St. Mirren will give them a, a comfortable time. Let's put it that way. Um, then John, I have a few mentions for the, everybody that's entered the competition for tomorrow. Udif, the Profits, we would never sell our club for a pound. Paul McComb, Adam Plunkett, Snap DB, Elaine, Mad About Football, Ghost Tracker, Billy Bahoy, Dan Casey, and Jai Johnston all entered the competition. And good luck to every single one of these on winning the Celtic Legends frame print. Bertie Old is this week, John. We legends. We miss him so much. Uh, you wouldn't mind that wee print yourself, John, would you? Uh, be part of Merchant, me, Bertie. Fantastic yeah, was, part uh, of it. What a part of, what a part of it. was flown with that wee guy. Loved him. Aye. Um, aye. Probably, if you if you look at, if you're looking at Celtic players with charisma and character, since the birth of Celtic, he, he's your man, isn't he? Wee Bertie. Probably, probably him and Tommy Burns, Frank McAvenny, guys like that. Aye. Uh, they've all got character, you're right. They're all, every time you listen to them, they make they make you laugh, don't they? Um, obviously, there's some more, but they're the ones stand out, don't they? Be better. Tommy Burns, yeah. Um, all right, John, you any comments for us? Aye, but what video do you want me to read for you? <laughs> I wasn't on the podcast the other day there, but... I'll oh, just what you've, whatever you've got, John, whatever you've got. Uh, Drunk Leprechaun, brilliant podcast, great Celtic men, hail, hail, Xander. Thanks for that, Drunk Leprechaun. Drunk Leprechaun, yeah, thanks. Drunk Leprechaun, I appreciate that. I think I went into to click Tony Steinet and his real name's there. I can't even remember what it was. But Drunk Leprechaun, thank you very much. Is it Dan? Is it Dan Breen? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I can't, well, I don't know. His name's Drunk Leprechaun on here, so that'll do for him. Aye. Thanks yeah. for the comment, Leprechaun. Uh, you, Dave, says, what about that Limassol result at Alcatraz the night? <laughs> Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, uh, and he also said, "Good solo shows, Ander. Hail, hail!" All right, thanks very much, Judith. Um That was. Uh, I didn't realise that Limassol played in green and white, John, because obviously I haven't watched their game. But 
you know, once I heard the result, I, uh, I wanted to see on the Souls goal. And they're playing the Green and White, so that was another team in Green and White getting the result at Ibrox. Aye, I watched the first game at Limus, uh, yeah. What they call Aris Limassol, isn't it? I think they call Aris yeah. Limassol is the name of the place. It's like Celtic yeah. Glasgow. But uh, anyway, never mind that. Cal McMaster, or McCaster, is that? Or Maxter? <laughs> Cole Maxter. 12 to 15 million for two players. We really need three to four. Make up your mind, mate. One of which has to be a top keeper like Lunin. Uh, I think we do need another keeper. I agree with you there. And we do need a few signings. No, I uh, Signings wise, we need a new, stri new striker. A new player to replace Atati, who's always injured. Uh, a new goalkeeper, a left back. That's just four off the top of my head, John. No, no we need plenty, aye. We can talk about it after I've read these comments for a, for a couple of minutes, Sander. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and who's that? Men of Letters, Hail Hail, and it's and then he's got a wee board one, Celtic nil again. Yeah, yeah, the board have uh, they've really stitched Brendan up a wee bit here with a lack of funds, I think, John. I've noticed I've also noticed that we're getting a lot of new commenters, John, so that's quite good. So keep the comments coming in, everybody. Aye. Uh, there's a couple of uh, longer comments here, but I'll maybe read just a wee bit of a couple of them at Xander. Mm -hmm. I don't want to spend too much time reading these, you know. Mm -hmm. think this is a wider football problem they will become a mega wealthy elite in football locking out other clubs and de facto turning the Champions League into the Super League well that's is that not the way it is the new really like a Super yeah. League isn't it? We, we are teams don't matter in the Champions League I spoke about this umpteen times teams like Celtic are an absolute irrelevance in the Champions League to uh, UEFA. There's four big nations that matter to them. And it's Germany, Spain, England, and probably Italy France. And France. Aye. Aye, maybe five, aye, Italy and France as well, why? But mm -hmm. these are the big nations that matter to them. Even the Dutch have fallen back. And uh, obviously countries like Belgium and all that as well, Sweden. These teams don't matter to them. They're never going to get anything after the Champions League. When it comes to their referees and the Champions League, you can see cheating. You can see it. I can, you can back mm -hmm. to the game against Lazio the other night, you can see there's cheating. Fouls happening in Celtic, players getting kicked half the park, nothing happening. Alistair Johnson getting booked for a perfectly timed tackle. That's right. Stuff like right. that, you know. So, look, I'm not a fan of the Champions League. You know that, Sand. And anybody listening, I say it all the time. I can't stand the Champions League and what it's become. Uh, Paul McEwen just says, "Hail, hail!" Thanks, Paul. He's always saying that. Sorry, uh, John. Who, 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 who left that co comment? You, you, you were commenting on there. Who was it that left that comment? Oh, the I the guy talking. Aye, his name was the Wave Goodbye Music. All right. Uh, thanks for your comment, buddy. I appreciate that. Okay. That was a great comment. Cheers for that. Aye. Uh, well, there was Mertie's comment. He, he, he did make an excellent comment, uh, the wave goodbye music. Uh, and there is Mertie the comment, but I'm just trying to fly through them because there's quite a lot of comments, you know. So I read, read the, the kind of most important part of his, uh, his comment out there, and it was a good comment, the wave goodbye music. Thanks very much for it, mate. That's appreciated. Um, yeah, cheers, mate. There's another couple for a drunk leprechaun. Then they go on for the prophet who says, sign the Pope. Aye. Aye. Aye, they should. Aye. That's, uh, that was, <clears throat> excuse me, that was uh, a nice couple of pictures of the Celtic players and the Pope, wasn't it, John? That was nice to see. Aye, it was good to see the Celtic players uh, and the Pope together. Great picture. Always good to see uh, Brendan. We've never seen him looking happier there, standing beside the Pope. God yeah, bless him. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That's all I can say about the Pope. Uh, yeah, not oh, like you're talking oh, about Brendan. <laughs> I know, no, God bless Brendan as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, John, how you go? <laughs> uh, I'll read a couple out for your wee video this morning when you're outside Celtic Park in the snow. Oh, aye, aye, my Christmas special. <laughs> that was good fun, yeah, good fun. Yeah. Uh, 
Liz Donnelly just said it was brilliant. The prophet, yeah, was, again, the prophet was in with a comment. Uh, talking about grit in the snow and all that stuff. Sorry, Prophet, my eyes start to go. See, I'm trying to read close to the computer. My eyes start to go, but it says, Here, Xander, you want to give that wee Celtic walk a grit and clear the snow? Don't want Lowell and Desmond getting their loafers wet and cold. Merry Christmas, <laughs> Celtic fans, especially Celtic for our podcast, Xander and John. Hail, hail. Thank you very much for that, Prophet. Yeah, thank you very much. And an early Merry Christmas to you as well, buddy. Uh, what else have we got? New Deep says the music would fit with the Puff the Magic Dragon tune. Aye. There you, um, there you go. You don't Puff want me to sing Magic. again, do you? Puff the Magic Dragon. <laughs> no. Puff the Magic Dragon. Dragon lives by the sea. Something like that. I went. Do you remember that for school days? No, we used to sing it when we were wins at school. Um, no, I don't remember that. I don't remember it. I've never heard, I've never heard that, John. <laughs> no, no, even, no, it's even, even that. No, no, I've never heard it. Puff the Magic. Was it a cartoon? I think, I think it was an animation or something like that. For the, I think it was the late 70s, maybe. Something right. like that. And I remember going to primary school, probably the early 80s and... The teacher used to have us singing that when we were wins. Puff the magic dragon lives by the no. sea. <laughs> that was merely a He-Man or Scooby-Doo kind of guy. <laughs> I, 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 I think is, uh, the teachers didn't have us singing He-Man Masters of the Universe in school. but No, no. Puff the, Puff the magic no. dragon was more child friendly, you know. Yeah, I'm but, trying uh, to think of other cartoons I used to watch when I was a win. He-Man was definitely one of them. Scooby Doo. Yeah. What else was there? I can't yeah, remember. All the, all the thingy cartoons, the Warner Brothers, wouldn't they? Obviously, you had uh, stuff like the Flintstones and that. I couldn't stand the Flintstones, by the way. Couldn't stand it. <laughs> See all that candle I... laughter and all that? No. Uh, what else was, was sure. there? The Pink, Pink Panther Saturday mornings. Do you remember that? Uh, I liked that. Uh, that was no bad. I quite liked that. <laughs> I liked that. That was all right. I, was afraid, I just can't remember them, John. It's been that long, obviously. Uh, but uh, they were good. He, he man, uh, Starfleet, remember Starfleet? Starfleet? Was that one of my puppets? Uh, that was one of the puppets. Uh, spaceships. <laughs> oh, was it no uh, Brian May, the Queen, that sang the theme tune for that? I buy me song that, that's right. Aye. Aye. Was, uh, that was probably that was good. Aye, that was puppets, that was like Thunderbirds, wasn't it? But obviously it wasn't Thunderbirds, it was Starfleet. That was better uh, than Thunderbirds, so you get back to all uh, these old programs we watched as as Wayne's and eighties, how much television has changed these days. Monkey, you remember Monkey? Monkey was brilliant, yeah, outstanding. Yeah. I could tell you show it's on these days. Anyway, we diverse, John. We diverse, John. To me. Aye, aye. If you look back to the <laughs> easier we puff the magic dragon, that takes you places, that stuff it. like that. That's um, it. Anyway, comments for this? Uh, mad about football. Not long to Santa now. Three points tomorrow. Early Christmas present. Couldn't you agree more with yeah, that? Mad about that'd football. be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, take that. Uh, Ghost Tracker. Well done, Xander, for braving those conditions. Thanks for the upload. That was a good video, yeah. Xander. I watched it myself, but. Uh, I couldn't be doing that walking about in the snow. Cold blooded. No, no. no it's, uh, it was freezing, John. It was freezing. My feet were soaking and everything, but it was quite good. I enjoyed it. All right, it was paradise. It was looking good in the snow. Could be a video of that, Xander. Yeah, cheers, John. Cheers, John. Um, <clears throat> so good luck to Celtic tomorrow, anyway. Good luck. I says 3 1. John says 2 0. Either way, we'll take we'll take it any sort of win tomorrow and pile the pressure on Rangers. That's what we're looking for tomorrow. And don't forget to enter the last chance to enter the competition. What minute will the first yellow card be given in the Celtic St Johnson game tomorrow? All we're looking for is the minute and the seconds. Give yourself a better chance of winning. Leave it in the comments section. This is your last chance. Mm. And uh, John, you anything you add before we go? No, I just you need to remind people the competition ends. Probably, if you can get your entries in before kick-off tomorrow, anything after 12 o'clock won't be accepted. So uh, you just got to remember that. You kind of leave an entry after the game's finished, obviously. But uh, 
And I've heard it in good authority that another podcast is copying you, Xander, giving away free prints. Is that right? Aye. <laughs> oh, maybe we've started, some, maybe, maybe we've started something, Johnny. Eh? Maybe. Everybody needs to remember where you heard it first, right here. I'm doing it for ages, so there you go. Yeah. I'll go yeah. copycats and the spies are out there, Xander, watching you. <laughs> All right, mate. All right. Um, <laughs> good luck to Celtic tomorrow. Good luck to Brendan. Good luck to the team. Um, any Celtic supporters heading up to Perth tomorrow, just be careful. Drive safely. Uh, conditions are quite bad out there, so just be safe. All right, John. Uh, and th- sorry, before we go, thanks to everybody that listens and views the podcast. Hit like and subscribe, and thanks to all our subscribers as well. All right, John. We'll catch you tomorrow. Okay, buddy. Speak to you tomorrow, Xander. Hail, hail, mate. Hail, hail, John. Bye, bye for now. <laughs>